Our next winner's story begins thousands of miles away, but the incredible impact she's made is being felt much closer to home. The terrorist attack on British tourists on a beach in Tunisia in 2015 shocked the nation. One black country mum suffered almost unimaginable loss, but through her grief, she has been determined to help others. It's time to meet her. Hi. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. It's lovely to see you. Look what I've got for you. I know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Well, it's lovely to see you, both of you. Thank you. Thank you for coming down and dropping it down to us. You're very welcome. Well, listen, before you take that, we're going to have a little look at your story. Thank you. My dad decided to take my brother and my two sons on holiday. They chose Tunisia because they'd been there before. They went on Thursday the 25th of June. They got there at midnight. The next morning I spoke to them. We text to check that they're okay. And then at 12 o'clock, I didn't hear from them again. Now it has been confirmed that 30 of the 38 people killed at that Tunisian beach resort were British. Many families experienced pain from both those events, but one lost three generations, a grandfather, a son, and a grandson. I had a phone call from Owen screaming, telling me that there'd been something dreadful happen and I just kept asking, well, where's Joel? You know, where's Adrian? Where, where's Grandad? Where's Dad? And Owen was telling me that they were all dead. You know, I think at that point, myself and Owen and our own family felt the loss and no one else had, had felt the loss, but clearly from Seeing the outpour of love, we know really saw how much it affected the whole community. Well, we were lucky to have that kind of support in that local way. We thought so many people don't have that. And so we thought if we could do something similar for that or even just help somebody in some certain way. We saw there was a gap, a need for that direct support. And that's what gave us the idea to actually set up Smile for Joel. We wanted to fundraise and give these families some support and help them make a smile. This year alone, they have given us £45,000 to put smiles on our clients' faces. These can be things such as spa breaks, holidays, weekends away places, even household appliances, so fridges and white goods and things like that that the families need and they're unable to afford themselves. We've helped over 1,500 family members that have been affected by murder. We get lots of thank you cards, thank you letters, private messages, which really makes us feel it's all worth it. The, the drive for this is to actually make smiles, to make these families feel better, to make those, to show those families that they're not on their own. Um, it's tough, we have to juggle so much to do it. Um, we do lots of events, we do charity events, musical events, sportsmen's dinners. For mum it was losing a son, a brother and a dad. And I think no one would blame her for just dealing with it in a different way. And I'm sure no one would blame her for that. But what she's done is create this out of seemingly something so horrifying and so awful. And that's one thing that I think we forget sometimes, is that Susie's still in her tunnel. She's lost three members of her family, and yet every morning she gets up because she wants to make a difference to other families going through what she's already been through and continuing to go through. Running a charity is amazing. It just gives me so much warmth. But what I'm able to do is actually talk about my family, talk about Joel, talk about my dad and my brother every day. And it makes me feel that they're still alive. I know they're not, but you know, to be able to talk about them every day, it allows me to smile. You know, that, that film's heartbreaking to watch. You know, what, what you've been through um, is, you know, you're incredibly brave. And not only that, but what you've done since then is so positive. It's it's impossible not to feel inspired by you. Thank you, thank you. There were, there were three amazing guys and, and if I can just carry on telling the world just how amazing they were, then it, it's what it's all about and making a difference for them. You know, they should be here and they're not and you know but the here hit the, my heart and the charity just lives for them. What would you say has helped you through your own grief the most? Uh, I think um, just the love and support. I think, you know, we, we always felt at the time that it was just us that had that loss and to realise that it affected so many people um, across the community, across the country, people that either knew my dad or knew Joel or knew my brother. 
um, to know that they were broken hearted as well um, and the love that they gave to us it was just that gave us the strength to carry on it really did it, I say to people it, it could have been worse that day I, I could have lost all four of them and, and that's a big thing to say but you know and if I can get through it I can and I'm with him every way We've got a little message from somebody who just wanted to give you their, their sincerest congratulations. So let's have a little look. Okay. Hi Suzanne, this is Chris Tarrant. When I um, read the detail of what happened to you and your family on that awful day, I just kept shaking my head. I just thought, how on earth do you ever recover from that? If it was me, I think I'd just, I would just crawl into a corner and cry my my life would hold nothing for me but you've been incredible because you seem determined you proved you're determined to show that something somehow good something positive must come out of that awful sick evil you're an amazing woman you're inspirational and it's not just it's not just the fundraising it's not just the money that you've raised it's the impact you've had on so many lives of other people going through the shock of bereavement, and you've shown them that there's somebody out there actually cares. You are an extraordinary woman, Suzanne. I am thrilled and privileged and proud to say, Suzanne Richards, you are, you really are, the pride of Birmingham. Bless you, darling. Brilliant. You have been through so much, and yet you continue to do so much for so many people. Thank you. So you can have your award, but is there anything else you would like to say? So many people were killed that day. There was 38 in total, and this is for all those that were killed as well, not just for my three. You know, this is for the charities for all those to remember. The saying is for all those that never came home. Um, so this is for them. Well, I think you're incredibly brave. I want to hug you, but I can't. So, oh, and give your mum a hug for me, please, <laughs> will you? Well done, mum. Incredible lady. Well done. Thank you.